Hello, I'm Kansaro Goso from Waseda University in Japan. This is a presentation video of a study, Thales Entropy Based Labeling. This is the summary of our study. We proposed a new annotation framework and have come up with a model to describe the framework. The background of our study is the fact that typical annotation framework or the methods are unnatural. Our key idea here to solve such a problem is allowing annotators to generate labels freely regarding their confidence level in annotation. Our model uses Thales entropy as threshold for selecting classes. In the experiment section, we provide some comparison results with other typical annotation methods to demonstrate the novelty of the proposed method. In the field of supervised classification, there is a common difficulty in manual annotation for training data. The problem of annotation cost owes to the fact that the learning requires accurate labels. In many cases, a dataset consists of ambiguous instances and unambiguous instances. For example, this image X may not be easily recognized as a dog by a human annotator. In other words, the annotator may not have a clear idea whether this image represents a dog or a wolf. To deal with the situations where it is hard for annotators to draw the single most desirable conclusion, Various annotation methods have been proposed as listed in this table. In complementary label proposed by Ishida, an annotator selects one incorrect class which does not represent the instance. In addition to that, Katsura generalized the idea and proposed candidate labels where an annotator selects multiple candidates for one true class. Now, one typical method that alleviates annotation cost is called top K in this study. In top K, annotators are required to always select a fixed number of classes as labels for each instance. So for top two, once an annotator sees an instance and builds its own probability distribution for the for decision, unconsciously and instinctively, of course, it takes the largest two values from the distribution and then selects the corresponding classes as labels, in this case, A and C. This method seems less laborious than ordinary labeling because it does not because it does not matter if the annotator is not able to decide which of A or C should be the final conclusion. However, there is one problem in top K. As top K does not consider the overall state of an annotator's probability distribution, ambiguous instances and unambiguous instances are treated equally after they have been annotated. So in this example, a is by far the most likely true class in the distribution on the left, whereas the probability for A and C are mostly the same in the distribution on the right. But these two are exactly the same in terms of labels A and C. Here we introduce the key idea in our study, which is reflecting annotators' uncertainty to the full extent. To be more specific, when an annotator is confident of their annotation, we can ask them for precise annotation as usual, so one label for one instance. But for other cases, we allow them to leave wider range of possibilities. In other words, they can freely select the number of labels for such, for such cases. So if the annotator is not able to decide if an instance represents a dog or a wolf, they both can be labels for the instance. In our model, we use Thales entropy and Thales self-information. First, we calculate Thales self-information for an instance, which represents uncertainty level for each class. Then, by taking the average of Thales self-information, we have Thales entropy for the instance, which, re which represents uncertainty level in average among all possible classes. In this model, for a class S to be assigned as a label, it must satisfy this inequation. Now, the parameter Q controls this model. Especially when taking the limit of q to 1, the model is equivalent to a method that uses Shannon entropy and Shannon self-information. The point here is that the number of labels per instance varies depending on an instance and different values of q. When we compare the two annotation methods, top k labeling and Thales entropy based labeling, there are some differences in their behaviors. The first step is the same. An annotator sees an instance and unconsciously and instinctively builds a probability distribution. Then it selects classes according to the two methods. And finally, we receive the generated labels. Let's take four classes classification problem here as shown in the figure and consider the case where K is two. In Thales entropy based labeling, we only receive one label A from an unambiguous instance, 
whereas we have more labels A, C, D for an ambiguous instance. By contrast, top two always generates two labels for any instance. Before we move on to the experiment section, we first demonstrate the theoretical structure of the two annotation families that we studied. The one at the top, ordinary labeling, is the usual single annotation that requires annotators to select one true class as a label. The one at the bottom is complementary labeling, where annotators select one incorrect class as a complementary label. By manipulating the parameter k, we can connect these two and call them top k labeling, which is represented by red arrow. Now the idea here is that selecting a number of classes as true candidate classes is equivalent to nominating the rest as incorrect candidates. Moving on to the left side of this figure, we can connect ordinary labeling and complementary labeling by manipulating the parameter q as well, represented by this light blue arrow. Now, we do not provide detailed proofs in this presentation, but we discover that some specific values of q correspond to four typical annotation methods. While taking limit q to 1, the model uses channel entropy as its threshold for annotation, which is quite a natural concept considering channel entropy is a fundamental tool to evaluate the uncertainty of a probability distribution. When q is 0, the model uses the value of a uniform distribution as a threshold for annotation. Now this is also a natural and typical idea, where an annotator selects all classes whose probability of being the true class is even a slight above than complete random choice. The case, of q lim uh, the case of limit q to the infinity is the ordinary labeling, and the case of limit q to the negative infinity is the complementary labeling. After we study theoretical relations between annotation methods, we designed a numerical experiment to observe how q and k affect annotation quality. The flow of our experiment is fairly simple. First, we train a classifier to model a human annotator. Its classification accuracy is deliberately set approximately at 80% because we believe it is not suitable for classifier that models human annotation to have too low or high accuracy. Second, we provide uh, some instances for annotation to the pre-trained classifier and have them to annotate according to Talis entropy based labeling and top K labeling separately. And finally, we observe the generated labels and evaluate the annotation qualities. Here are the details of our experiment. For dataset, we use MNIST and Fashion MNIST. We had 2000 images to train an annotator and also 2000 images to be labelled by the annotator as well. For learning algorithm, we used logistic regression. In addition, we did not conduct any special parameter optimization of feature engineering since our essential goal is not achieving the optimal classification accuracy. And these are the first two scales we use for labels evaluations. The first equation represents the distribution of the number of labels. So we have stated in previous slides, the number of labels per instance is not constant in our proposed method. By contrast, it is always k labels per instance in top k labeling. The second formula represents the average number of labels. It is defined as the total number of generated labels divided by the number of instances. And this is the first result. These are histograms that illustrate the distribution of the number of labels for several different values of Q. The left side is for MNIST, and the right side is for Fashion MNIST dataset. The horizontal axis represents the number of labels M, and the vertical axis, axis represents the ratio RM of instances that were labeled with M labels. Now these figures show that when taking limit Q to the infinity, all the instances are single labels. This is because when taking q lim taking limit q to the infinity, the labeling scheme is equivalent to top one labeling. Now, in the case of q to the negative infinity, all the instances are labeled with nine labels because the labeling scheme is equivalent to top nine labeling here. Also, as the value of q decreases, the distribution R n gradually moves to the right, meaning that more labels are attached to instances. In addition. While the value of Q is in the middle range, the distribution RM scatters, meaning that there are more variation in the number of labels generated per instance. Now this indicates that the parameter Q represents confidence level of an annotator in terms of its labeling. Now this is the third scale we use for labels evaluation, Hellinger distance. 
Hellinger distance allows us to measure the difference between two probability distributions. In our case, the, di the difference between annotators' probability distribution and the subsequent training data uses a probability distribution. So if the user's conditional probability distribution for the training data, p tilde x, better approximates the conditional probability distribution for the annotator, px, this indicates that the annotator's original ideas on the classes to which a given instance belongs is better expressed in the form of labels attached to the instance x. Now we assume that subsequent users of the training data labeled by the annotator do not have any prior knowledge about the true class y of any instance x other than the training data. Therefore, we can assume that the true label for an instance x is contained in the label set yx, and that the probabilities of being the true class are distributed uniformly among all possible candidates. In other words, it is most natural for subsequent users of the training data to estimate the constitutional probability distribution of the true class y of a given instance x as the equation in this slide. In our study, there is no order relations between labels, so there is no difference between a, c and c, a. These are the graphs illustrating Hellinger distance between px and p tilde x for labels generated by tally centrally based labeling. A on the left is for MNIST and B on the right is for fashion MNIST. For the annotator's conditional probability distribution, we use the output from a pre trained classifier. Now, in both figures, the horizontal axis represents Q, the vertical axis on the left represents Hellinger distance, and the vertical axis on the right represents the average number of labels per instance. Based on these two figures, we can conclude that in the case where Q to the infinity, top 1 labeling or ordinary labeling, it does not minimize Hellinger distance. We can state that in order to acquire labels accurately reflecting an annotator's knowledge or abilities against training data, it is not always optimal to constrain the annotator to provide single labels. Now this is the exact same graph for labels generated by top K labeling. In both figures, the horizontal axis represents K, and the vertical axis on the left represents Hellinger distance, and the vertical axis on the right represents the average number of labels per instance. Here we can say that in the case where K is 1, top 1 labeling or ordinary labeling, this minimizes the Hellinger distance, and larger value of K result in an increase of Hellinger distance. And therefore, when we fix the number of labels that an annotator generates per instance, it is always impossible it is to reflect annotators knowledge or abilities to the full extent unless all the instances are provided with a single label as seen in the previous slides the number of labels per instance varies depending on q and k therefore we compare the two labeling schemes by the hellinger distance with respect to the average number of labels per instance again a on the left is for MNIST and B on the right is for fashion MNIST. The horizontal axis represents uh, the average number of labels and the vertical axis represents Hellinger distance. Now that these figures show that the Hellinger distance is clearly smaller in tally based labeling compared to top K labeling. It indicates the superiority of the fundamental concept of a framework, and that is, the idea of allowing annotators to generate labels with no constraint of providing a fixed number of labels to all instances. Finally, we summarize our contributions and introduce a short discussion for future work. In this study, we propose a new annotation framework that uses solid entropy and solid self information. We first discovered the theoretical relations between the annotation schemes. Then we demonstrated that the proposed framework better expresses annotators' ideas. Now, one important feature work is implementing the proposed labeling with an optimal value of Q. However, this task might be very challenging because it is difficult to be explicitly aware of or even manipulate each annotator's Q, not only for others but also annotators themselves. And the presentation is it. Thank you very much for watching.